Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com. Today, I'm at Hardy Pond, Saturday morning with my son. Uh, it's about 50 degrees. It was 35 this morning. This is right after the ice melt. There was ice out here just last week, and now it's filled up the pond a little bit. It's still cold. It's the second day of spring. And we're gonna see if we can get some crappie or some bass or something action from the shoreline. So we've got our range of an arrangement of lures that we're gonna try out and you can check it out. <laughs> So, in the spirit of 2021, I've made the resolution to go big. Now, I'm not sure if my son's going to do that, but he's thinking about it too, because I mentioned it. So, maybe you can expect me to catch less fish, but there's a there's going to be a high prop, uh, propensity, I think that's the word, for me to catch something large. Now, I have uh, some things I shouldn't be using today, and some things I should. Right now I have a black and blue chatterbait with a big, ginormous craw in it. I also have a balsa wood red crawfish crankbait. And I have a minnow style whopper plopper, which I have not used yet, which I'm just kind of curious to see how it moves. I'll be recording this. You might enjoy it, might not enjoy it, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to move these back here so they're out of my way. Let's try out that uh, Balsa Wood Rapala BX, BX Brat, six foot deep Balsa Wood Crankbait. That looks like a craw. Now I'm pretty sure there aren't crawfish in here, but does that really matter? It's red. Oh yes, we do have a last resort. It's a thing called worms. And we know there's something around because we ain't catching nothing on no fake lures. Then, not fake lures, just lures. Then maybe live bait will get them moving. But I'm gonna give everything an ample try this year. Even though I have no faith. One too many times. Look, that guy who's fishing over there is now parking over here. Sorry, that's not. Nothing as of yet, but you never know. Sometimes there's a few bass just roaming up really early. It's really cold, and there might be an opportunity. It might strike. It might be the only one that's around and the only one kept in this kind of transition season. It's getting warmer. But yes, it's getting warmer today. It's getting warmer in a minute. The uh, water isn't getting that warm that fast, but the air is. I mean, good times are upon us. Likely this thing rises up a bit. Yeah, watch.
Looks like we have a neighbor now. It was over there, now he's over here. I'm checking to see. He might know this even better than me. I'm really anxious to see if he gets any action. Yeah, that's so the reason I was using this because I heard that fish see red in the spring. Now maybe this is with river fish where you're likely to see a crayfish like in the Charles River you know there's plenty of crayfish you don't you know you can't pick them up like I used to do in my creek in Virginia like anywhere but they are, they're out there definitely especially towards the city side now this looks just like a crab but this is a small pond and I'm pretty sure it's not stocked with crayfish so let's try something else Yeah, the red rod and the red wheel. Pretty cool. Actually, I need something different. So next up on this kind of broken reel and subpar rod I got in Tampa, Florida for saltwater fishing. It's a uh, South Bend Northern, which when you hit the word South Bend, you already know what you're getting. Um, and this is a uh, Abu Garcia cardinal from way back in yesteryear and let's check out this check out the shatter bait look at the size of this trailer when i say i'm going big i'm not playing but this is also you know i mean i'm not quite sure what things see when it's black and blue i just know that it's a dark thing to them and if they don't know what it is they're gonna eat it but it's heavy which means hopefully i can catch this real far I remember, I need to slow down. Slow it down. So, people have caught stuff for working bait, even in cold weather. Slowing down is generally going to be better. I think this will be the rod that I'll throw some live bait on. I don't.
what? Oh. I have to remember sometimes that I need to work the shoreline, you know, casting nearly parallel to shoreline versus casting straight up. Now, in the, the summertime, the crappy are positioned in like four to six feet of water right out here and they love some minnow, minnow lures but not quite sure I was hoping that there'll be some movement and be able to get some crappy shallow because it's spawn really spawning temperature right now we're like just about be coming up so I heard Shoreline over there? Huh? You gonna hit that shoreline over there? Yeah. You tell them like last year there was like those little minnows in there like crazy to be like the bass would be eating anything over there and then those shoreline over there? That was summertime. No, that was just before winter. So let's do something a little adventurous. I'm gonna do a double move here. I'm talking. I'm we'll gonna hook up a worm to this this rod, and then I'm gonna pull out the old whopper flopper just to see how it moves. Don't expect anything, but. Right here. How's you going over there, Beth? I can see here. <laughs> I see nothing. Doesn't mean anything though. Man, it's just slipping up and leaving it big. It works, but not when it's windy and cold. I can't feel my fingers anymore. No, it's not mine. I don't have yours. Oh. Yours is in your tackle bar.
break this little wire boy. And here we This is another thing where I said you need to get a towel to wipe your hands off because this just gets messy over time. Crap gets under your nails. And Good way to smell like worm, which smells like nothing, or a good way to smell like fish if you are catching something. So, make sure you have a towel. There you go. Oops. Dumped all my stuff out onto the ground. Do my life. go, got the worm on, we're gonna give it a really good toss, something too close, right? Sky high. I think that was middle of the lake. That was fun. Might want to hold on to this for a second. I feel like Something, something has got to be out there. With the braided line, I have very tight tension, unlike monofilament. So I should be able to feel just a small vibration in the hook or anything just sniffing at it, even at this distance. Monofilament, I might not notice. But we've been on this pond before, and sometimes you get no luck over here. And if you go over there, there's a little road there that ends and goes into where there's lily pads later during the summertime. And, and you you'll, get, you'll get a totally different selection of fish. Crappy over here. Crappy and bluegill, and over there, you'll get bluegill and bass, and you won't find any crappy over there. Hey, Dad. Very interesting. What? That looks like a crayfish lure. No, that is a crayfish. It's a crayfish. Crayfish found. I was wrong. There are crayfish in this pond. And they're big. Yeah, and it think? looks like it's hauling away another crayfish. Or maybe they're mating. I should try to, I should try to capture this on, on video. I can. Hold on. Let's see if they can see that. I don't know. I'll check it out later. You see that thing moving down there? With the legs and the tail. An antenna, crayfish, maybe eating another crayfish or mating. I'm not sure. I'm gonna give them some alone time though. Cause I would like more crayfish in here if that is true. Holy smokes. Bennett with the eyeball. Crayfish. What? Get out that's of here. What, that's what my grandma calls me Eagle Eyes Norris. Uh, that's right. Crayfish, get out of here. I gotta, why didn't they hit my BX brat? Crayfish, crankbait. Did that bring his gigantic crayfish for us? Yeah, it's in here, it's a plastic, and then it's in plastic here and plastic here. I can see someone's gonna be going big this summer with the crayfish. Can't believe it. Dave, what, what do you have on here? Oh, that, that crayfish is moving, I think. Dead. This general is not moving. This is very, very interesting information. I think I'll put it on the title of the video. Crayfish found. Hardy pond. We're back on another spot of the lake. 
of the pond where we've had some bass action during the summer, but you know, it is shallow, it is cold, it is early, early, second day of spring, but we'll try here and then we're gonna try somewhere else out, which we'll see in another video. And see if we can get something going on this Saturday. Here's the morning dust. A lot of destroyed bobbers around here. What's that? It's a mockingbird. I mean, I mean a blue jay. Sorry. You have to cast it in the middle, because if you don't, you're gonna hit that tree and get, get hung in that tree right above you. You have to be careful with that. That's a big rod too. It's heavy. Mm. Did you want this side? I just wanted to give it a couple casts. I've got my son drop one minute on a shallow water, but. I'm really hoping something. Oh, yeah. I forgot about my, my own line. Literally. Almost got drenched. Blooper reel. Yeah, I'm getting done with this one. I'm done. So, not much action going on here at Hardy Pond. The other guy who was fishing didn't catch anything either. The water's really cold. It's the second day of uh, spring. I've tried a variety of lures. I did find a crayfish. That's super cool. Something to be knowledgeable of later. And if you're around town, I want to switch up your lures. So I'm going to be going to another place today, but you'll see another video on that. If you want more information, you can go to fishingatwork.com and get your 10 step process. Go fishing at work PDF free right on the top of the screen. That will be changing soon when I switch over to a different opt-in, which is probably something you want to know more about, which is how to get lures for cheap. And I believe that's something you can use because everybody wants more lures. They want cheaper lures and they want more of them. And if you can get them for cheaper, that's better. So on DwightNorthFishNetwork.com, you can go fishing.